So we are live. This is our, is this now the third Cash Like Catch Up game, Hannah? I'm kind of losing count because we did a couple test runs. Yeah, this is our third that's been broadcast. Yeah. All right. Well, and I believe I'm undefeated, even though I think I ended most of the games with zero points because I wagered everything (laughs) and then, (laughs) and then I just lost it all on the last question. Can you be undefeated if we haven't had a winner? <laughs> uh, Let's see here. Hannah, I, I forgot to ask you before we started, but now that we're live, it's good. Uh, let, should I keep the comments flowing here, or I don't? I don't even know if I know how to turn them off. So I guess we'll just we'll just have to oh, see. Oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I am trying to see if I can look at the comments from my own. Oh, uh, ETS show can... is in the house. Oh, awesome! All right. Ooh, All right, Hannah, so why don't you that. tell people about the game? Oh, actually, we should probably, I don't know if they're used to seeing everybody. So I'm Matt Watto. You probably recognize my voice if you listen to The Curbsiders. With me, Chris the Chew Man Chew. That's me. Quarantine from his family somewhere in yeah. Ohio. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, the wonderful Hannah R. Abrams, who is the voice of our Twitter. Hannah, tell people, what are we doing here tonight? All right, so this is the cash lack catch-up game, spaced repetition with the usual side of self-deprecation. And this is a trivia game show with the idea of doing some spaced repetition and also just getting some distraction from everything that's going on. Um, so the rules of the game, we're going to have 10 questions and then a Ooh. bonus question. Oh. Oh. If you... Oh. Yeah, sorry uh, about that. No problem. Uh, yeah, so we're going to have 10 questions. If you get the question right, you get a point. If you buzz in before the question is finished, you lose a point. If you buzz in after the question is finished and you get it wrong, nothing happens. I'll read the questions out loud and whichever of you, I think today we're doing that you're going to say your name as loudly as you can. <laughs> Maybe not as loudly as we can because we some of us have children sleeping, Hannah. <laughs> but I, I do want to hear Chris scream out, Chew Man, though. That, that was a big part of the motivation. <laughs> Should I practice a couple times? Yeah, now, the, the problem is if I start doing it and I lose my voice and I start coughing and I start coughing at work, people will start freaking out. So I'll try not to scream too loud. Then, yeah, then they're going to send you home. <laughs> uh, all right. You guys uh, can – and then at the end, we're going to have a bonus question. It's uh, sort of goofy, and you can get any number of your points on that bonus question. All right, Chris, and you can decide if you want to go along with this or not, but my I always bet all my points, even if it makes no sense point-wise. Uh, oh, always all in. Okay, I'll, good. I'll, I'll bet all my zero points that I'm going to have. <laughs> okay, and since we have audience uh, questions, or we have audience comments today, if the audience, if you guys don't get the question and the audience does, they get a point. Uh, and then they can decide how many points to bet at the end based on uh, whatever is posted most often. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking at the comments. I'm going to get distracted by these. I see Nephro Sparks just joined. Oh, man. Someone start talking about ACE inhibitors. RTA. <laughs> RTA. I'm going to guess RTA is the answer for everything tonight. All right. With that, <laughs> RTA. What strategy did Dr. Pacheca recommend for differentiating an urticarial rash from a morbilliform rash? Um, good question. choo 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 Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Looking at it. Okay. Okay. (laughs) I'm going to say uh, the urticarial rash is usually gone and it's gone and it leaves no trace. The morbilliform rash is going to hang around a little bit longer. So I think if you like drew around it and then you come back the next day, if it's, if it's gone, it was urticarial. Boom. Yeah. Tincture of time. Uh, mm. Yeah, so that was her recommendation. If you draw around it with a marker, an urticarial rash might change positions. All right, one point to Matt. Although, Chris, I, li- I liked your answer too. I think it's pretty relevant. Perhaps. All right, one point. I mean, to does Matt. our audience know what morbilliform means? <laughs> I bet you they, they, they. Someone must know. Morbilliform. Uh, I don't know. Matt Sparks is, is talking to- about steroids. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it just mean like measles-like, right? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I, I think it is measles-like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think so, too. Uh, Extra points to... for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Next question. 
How often does buprenorphine have to be dosed if you want to treat pain with it? Wado. Yeah, what's up? This this is one of my favorite things to just harp on in the hospital. So the analgesic effect of bup is six every six to eight hours. So it, it lasts about six to eight hours. So you, you need to dose it that often. Crushed it. Yeah. This was a learning point for me mm. for sure. Yeah, that's why perioperatively, if someone's on the eight of bup twice a day, uh, oftentimes I'll switch them to four every six hours. So that way they get sort of steady pain control perioperatively. Or you can go to eight three times a day, depending on depending on what their baseline dose is. Awesome. All right, next question. Uh, what additional vaccines should you offer to men who have sex with men or MSM? Choo, 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 HPV. Oh, oops. Yeah, you got one. Okay, I'll, I'll count that. <laughs> oh, oh, vaccines is plural. Okay. <laughs> what else, Chris? Hep A. Yeah. Nice. Uh, yeah, and then some of uh, our guest point for that one was uh, HPV if they haven't gotten it, uh, and then meningococcal if they haven't gotten it before, and if they have high risk features. All right. Next question. Wait. So we are tied. Two to two. Dr. Yes. Ana Maria Lopez gave us a primer on telehealth last year, which is suddenly very timely. Uh, what is the one key requirement that must be met for a telehealth visit, according to the ACP? Come on, audience. Our... Tell us the answer here. I know. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> key requirement. This, I th- oh, I don't know. This, uh, this, might Wado. Cha- this might be changing. Wado, Wado's got an answer here. I think you just have to know the patient. You have to have some relationship with the patient is what she said. Yeah, totally. So you have to establish a physician-patient relationship. <laughs> Either you have to have an established physician-patient relationship or you have to go through the same standard of like that you would do with a new patient as you would in person. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Some I'm, of the I'm, listeners wait, got wait. it. And uh, wait, a couple wait. listeners I, were I, saying I, consent. I still don't. Yeah, I think she consent is better because we can do new patient telehealth appointments now. So I don't think you'd have to have have an established relationship now. Everything's changed. So yeah, at I, least that's what my compliance has told me. So I, I think her point was like you have to go through the same like kind of type of H and P that you might or like history that you would with a new like an inpa- new patient intake. Gotcha. Like your regular E and M stuff that you. Chris, are you disputing the question? I thought we weren't going to take this seriously. I thought this was uh, whose line is it anyway? Rules. (laughs) I'm trying to. I'm trying to teach people here. Oh man. Oh yeah. No, you're right. right. You're right. Okay, so uh, I have lost track of the points. I think uh, Matt and Chris are doing. Let's let's say you guys each have three. We're doing well. Let's say it's about tie. The audience is doing great as well. Yeah, but the new patient is very new. (laughs) All right. Uh, an audience has at least one point at this point. All right. Next question. Oh, yeah. How long should it take someone to complete five repeat repeat chair to sit to stands? And please demonstrate if you can. Oh. Do this. What a uh, um, is sarcopenia. I, this, this is a guess. I can't remember. I'm going to guess 15 seconds. A machine, yeah. So this is the idea. It's like a nice bedside or office measure of sarcopenia. And so they should be able to sit sit to stand five times in 15 seconds. Don't ask me to do that right now. <laughs> I'm already standing. I always I always stand when I record. So I you won't be able to see me if I sit and stand. There, the, you, <laughs> you're having a little too much fun with this, Chris. Oh, my gosh. I forgot about that element of this sort of telehealth. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, SPS is helpful. Oh, good thing we have the nephrologist on the chat. SPS is helpful for excreting excess potassium by the GI tract. Uh, What patients should you avoid it in? Watto. This is this is kind of anybody with a sick gut, and then the other one was immediately post-op from a, a kidney transplant. Whoa. Wow, it's it's almost like you produce the show. It's almost yeah. like it's almost like I spend uh, many many hours. <laughs> Matt, I <laughs> yes, <laughs> Nephrosparg saying avoid it in everybody. I try to avoid that's, it. That's what I would say. That's my yeah. answer. 
Somebody, right, I'll, I'll take that. I, I, I think, think the, the patyramer is still, yeah, patyramer is still too hard to get your hands on at at most places. But mm-hmm. I feel like Great. in the future, those what is it, SCZ or the zirconium Zirconia, one Zirconia and patyramo. Like yeah, I feel like those ones are going to be much better. We should just dialyze them all, right? <laughs> That'll be fine. <laughs> All right. Oh, I love that we have like a little bit of a delay, so I'm going to get to avoid seeing the nephrologist react to that on the chat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. What percentage LDL reduction should you expect with a moderate intensity statin? Choo, 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 choo. Yeah. Uh, that would be, uh, wow, I'm less 25 to 49%. Uh, I'll take it. Oh, that includes the range. Yeah, so this is from uh, our recent lipids episode. 30. Huh. Yeah, so for a high-intensity statin, you should expect a greater than 50% drop. For medium, like 30 to 49, and then low-intensity, less than 30. I'm so sorry, Dr. Mikos. I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I think she recommended rechecking, um, like, what, three months after? You can do it between four and 12 weeks, so one to three months. Yeah, it happens pretty quick. All right. Oh, the audience The audience has got some people getting it, too. Okay. The current score is Matt 5, Chris 4, audience 4. Oh, I'm tired of the audience. Oh. Yeah, the audience is like the collective. In this fake collective. game with fake points, you're... <laughs> yeah. Just so don't make me do the next answer in haiku. Uh, what kind of screening should you continue for patients with HCV after sustained virologic response? Watto. This would be screening for hepatocellular carcinoma. With uh, do, do you need it? Do you need me to say with what? No, yeah, that's okay. okay. There's one other potential screening, like depending on exposures, Chris. If you HIV, Good, yeah. Oh so... no, is it? No, it's um. So this was like from oh yeah, because you can get back. reinfected. The episode. Yeah. yeah, if you're oh. continuing IV drug use, then you should consider getting an annual uh, hep C RNA. Uh, and then if they have cirrhosis, they should get HCC screening. So this yes. is from like episode 60 or something. When it's we visited, yeah, when we visited uh, VCU, Scott, we d- there was a, a morning report case and it was a it was a hep C case. And Scott Matherly was talking about the point that he always has to tell patients that they can get reinfected because they think like once they're cured, he's like, all right, they paid for this very expensive treatment once, but let's not, let's not push it and get infect reinfected. That would be liver prof on Twitter here at liver prof. Right. That's right. Yeah. We got to get him on for one of these. Well, Oh, he's great. Yeah. All right. In our first ever hotcakes episode, we discussed what unlikely, but evidence-based treatment for nausea that has been shown to have similar. Choo, 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 choo. <laughs> Because <laughs> I because I, I do this is Matt's favorite one. Uh, <laughs> isn't it like huffing uh, alcohol pads? Yes. <laughs> Don't you carry them around and give them to every patient, Chris? I, I use them to clean my stethoscope. <laughs> <laughs> I um I have not had the chance to try this, but this has been a fact that I have found interesting since I saw that original study. Have either of you guys tried this? Oh yeah, I of have. course. Yeah, I think it works, it works. for. I think it works. Um, at least as often as the four milligrams of ondansetron does, which was the which was what the comparison was. I think the bottom line is four milligrams of ondansetron just doesn't work for for hardly anyone. So you should either give eight or just use something else. So yeah, like something dopaminergic, gotta go with yeah. something like that. Yep. All right. Are we? I feel like right. we. Is this bonus round coming up now? All right. Next week, I'm going to number the questions. Uh, <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, where, Matt has six points, Chris has five points, and the audience has six points through absolutely no real math and me just sort of <sighs> adding up tallies whenever I thought someone made a good point. <laughs> uh, the audience is doing great. Oh, okay. All right. We have at least two more. Oh, never mind. This is the last one before the bonus. Uh, rate the following SSRIs from more activating to more sedating. Paroxetine, fluoxetine, and citalopram. I picked hard questions because I know you guys know every episode. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Watto, I'll take a stab at this. 
I'll, I'll, t- I'll take a stab at this, Chris, but that, so I know perox, I believe peroxetine is the most sedating and then it's just, uh, just pure guess on the next one. I'm going to say, uh, fluoxetine, then citalopram. Chris, you want to, you want to take it? Are you saying, so you're saying, I basically said the order that's shown there, which I believe is wrong. Oh, you're, oh, you're <laughs> going from sedating to most activating? No, actually, I think fluoxetine is more activating. Yeah, totally. So the big point from the episode or one of like around this was that paroxetine is pretty sedating, but fluoxetine is kind of the one that he gave as an example of an activating SSRI and then citalopram and escitalopram and, um, uh, oh, I cannot remember the generic names, uh, are all kind of in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I didn't read the question <laughs> right. I was giving you most, I was giving you what I thought was most sedating, but I got it wrong that way either. I yeah. just knew paroxetine is very sedating. All right, so the audience got it, and Matt got it. Uh, oh, wait, no, sorry, and Chris got it. So we are tied, Matt 6, Chris 6, audience 7, through, again, literally no real math. Oh, uh, <laughs> we can do this, Matt. We can do this. All right. We can't let the like audience beat us. Bonus round. <laughs> okay, uh, so I would like you guys, let me know how much do you want to bet on the final round. And audience, if you guys just want to comment with how much – you want to bet? Um, I'll go with whatever's most comment, most most commented. I'm gonna let it all ride, Hannah. As as I said last week, Mama Mama needs a new pair of shoes. <laughs> I'm gonna bet eleven. Okay, that's bold. That's bold. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you could technically do I'm that, but that's points. that's okay. You're taking the I'm audiences just, and we're yours. Not in yes. Yeah. Yes. All in, guys. Okay. <laughs> audience is all in as well all right audience is seven okay you can't look at the comments during this one okay it, it either way. and this time i gave myself several uh several slides <laughs> in a row with this one. Almost there. okay uh in our chest 2019 recap episode we learned about a test of coagulation that can minimize transfusion while providing equivalent outcomes Spell what TEG stands for. This does require knowing what TEG stands for. <laughs> so we have to spell it out or just say it? Like I, I'm, I'm writing this down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Write it out. Show it. Show it to the screen. Yeah. Hmm. This is assuming I have a pen handy. Oh, I do. All right. We need right. some. We need some music for this. I gotta. I gotta work that out. Well, let me get a. Pen and paper. Uh, uh-huh. That's that's what's happening here. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right, audience, what uh what do you guys think? The audience doesn't know this. Oh, the audience is so close so far. <laughs> Probably Google searching. Yeah, that's true. The audience does have Google. <laughs> I can't. Chris, I did I just show you the answer? Did you, are you done writing? I, I can't see. I can't, I can't see your video. Okay, that's. There we go. <laughs> Hannah, can you see? I, I did see. Okay. I will wait to. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I don't. <laughs> Yeah, we do need some music. I, okay. I need to put some yeah. music in for for this uh, future, Hannah. I, I'll, I'll have to work that out. I'm so impressed. Matt and the audience both got this. It is thromboelastography. Mm. Yeah, I still don't really understand about it, and I have never seen it used. But then again, I don't really work in the intensive care unit, so maybe that's why. I, uh, I did a Mickey rotation and our fellow was like really excited about it. So we actually got to watch it happen and used it like for clinical decision making. It was super awesome. Uh, and I did not know how to spell thromboelastography. So th- that was my learning point for this episode. <laughs> All right. So our final score is Matt 12, uh, Chris 0, uh, but a winner in our hearts. Uh, and audience 14. So congratulations to the audience. Actually, I think I'm negative five. <laughs> oh, you're so right. You are. Uh, <laughs> so next time I'm on the show, if I'm ever back on the show, I'll start off with negative. 
congratulations, Chris. You are our first negative point getter for this whole thing, which is uh, an accomplishment in itself, I think. <laughs> All right. Congratulations to the audience. Thank you so much for, to everyone who joined us. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Nice job, Hannah. All right. Are we...